Okay. So this is chapter 10 of Cortez and Montezuma. Montezuma's death. Full of grief and despair, seeing little honor for himself if the Spaniards conquered, and even less if his own people conquered, Montezuma had but one wish, to die. His wounds, though severe, need not have caused his death, but the unhappy king resolutely turned away from all aid, tore away the bandages which the surgeon had applied, refused all food and drink, begging only that he be allowed to die. Knowing that his death was near, the Spaniards, who had come to love him for his gentle manners and kindness, gathered round him and begged him to save his soul from the sad doom that must await one who died in the darkness of a heathen belief. Father Olmedo, with honest tears, begged him to turn from his wicked faith, embrace the Spanish religion, be baptized and saved. But the wretched Montezuma only turned his face away, saying, Little have I seen of good in the white man's religion. Little have I seen to turn me from the ancient faith of my people. No, I have but a little time to live, and I will not at this hour desert the religion of my fathers. One care only weighed upon Montezuma's mind. That was the future of his three daughters. Calling Cortez to his bedside, he said, For the friendly offices I have rendered the Spaniards, and for the love I have shown, I beg you, promise me, in this my last hour, that these children, to me my most precious jewels, shall not be left destitute, shall not be deprived of their rightful inheritance. Cortez promised that it should be in this as he asked, and let us remember it to Cortez's honor that he kept his promise. Montezuma died, and among none were more, and among none were more honest, heartfelt tears sh shed than among his captors. For though Montezuma had failed in the great trial of his courage, although he had proved himself lacking in the courage to lay down his life for his people, Although he was therefore not a great warrior, yet during his captivity he had shown such tenderness and gentleness of thought, such stately dignity of bearing, and such nobility of principle, that his captors even had come to love him. Perhaps this sorrow on the part of the Spaniards, who, at no time, have been charged with over-tender heartedness, speaks more in favor of Montezuma's personal character than anything else could. By Montezuma's faithful attendance and the priests who had remained with him, his body was carried forth into the city. He died, thundered Cortez, from wounds inflicted by his own people. Loud lamentations arose when the Mexicans saw the body of their king cold in death. The Spaniards have killed our king! The Spaniards have killed our king! Oh, Montezuma! Great Montezuma! Avenge our king's death! Avenge his death! On! On to the Spanish quarters! And so, even while Montezuma's body was being burned in the great square amid the mourning multitude, fierce battle again closed round the Spaniards. Day after day it increased in fury. Montezuma! Montezuma! Now the war cry. All attempts at peace with the incensed Indians were rejected. The Spaniards grew weaker, the troops mutinied, the bridges were destroyed, the streets were blocked, ruin, 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 stared Cortez in the face on every side. Montezuma's death was a great misfortune to the Spaniards, for while he lived, they had in their keeping a precious hostage, which might, in a last despair, prove of untold service to the Spaniards in their dealings with the Mexicans. Now, not one tie existed between Cortez and the natives.